Hi guys, welcome back. We're going to make a pot roast today and I'm going to show you just how easy it is. We're going to have potatoes and carrots in that and it's going to make a nice gravy. We're going to start out with a Dutch oven and two tablespoons of olive oil. I have that Dutch oven set at a medium high so that we can sear that pot roast. Now just a little tip, when you're shopping for your pot roast, make sure you get one that has quite a bit of marbling in it. The marbling is the fat that runs through the meat and that's what's going to help make your pot roast really tender and flavorful. If you get a pot roast that's too lean, it's not going to be very tender when you finish cooking it. And no matter how long you cook it, it's just not going to break down as well as if you have one that's, that has all the marbling. So we're going to check our pan and see if it's hot enough here in just a minute. We want to make sure that that oil is nice and hot so that we get a good sear on each side. No, I didn't stick my hand in, but it's not quite warm enough. So we want to make sure to let that sit a little bit longer. And once, like I said, once that gets hot, we're going to stick uh, the pot roast in there and let it start browning on both sides. It's really nice brown. This is going to seal the juices in and help add more flavor as it cooks. Now while we're waiting for that, I have two cups of hot water and I'm bringing that over and what we're going to do with that two cups of hot water is I have some better than bouillon beef flavor. Since I don't have any beef broth, I'm going to use that today. And I'm going to use two heaping teaspoons in the two cups of water. And the water is, is very hot. We need it hot to dissolve this better than bouillon in it. And it's going to help add some flavor for us. So I'm going to stir that really well before I add any of the other ingredients to it. If you haven't tried the better than bouillon products, give those a try. They're really good. They add great flavor to whatever it is that you're cooking. I'm going to pull you a little closer here so you can see what we're doing. And I'm stirring that really well to get that dissolved. Once we get that stirred together, we're going to add a few more ingredients to this. This is going to add extra flavor for our gravy and it also helps the flavor when you're cooking the meat and the vegetables. Kind of just pulls everything together. So to that, we're going to add a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. And Worcestershire adds some yummy flavor to whatever you're cooking just about. And then I've got some Cabernet Sauvignon. And that's a red wine. As long as it's not a sweet wine, you can use any red wine you'd like. And I use about a quarter of a cup. That's going to help bring the flavor out as well. And it gives it a richness. I'm going to stir that all together. And our pot looks like it's just about ready. So we're going to go ahead and get that pot roast into the pot. So we'll push it back so you can see what we're doing. There you go, right there. Perfect. So let's get that pot roast in there and get it going. There we go, it's nice and hot now. Now as this is starting to, to sear on the first side, we're going to season it with just a few things. We're going to add some onion powder and you're going to season it however much you want to season it. Um, it just depends on the flavors you enjoy, but we use a lot of onion powder and of course Lowry's seasoning salt and I use the reduced sodium seasoning salt. Oh, uh, there's going to be quite a bit of sodium in this because of the broth, so we don't want to add too much. And some black pepper. Give that a few shakes. There we go. Now we're going to check it here in just a moment just to see how we're doing. We want to be really careful not to burn this, but we want to get a nice sear on it. 
when in a Dutch oven, you get nice even heat in this. This is like my very favorite pot to cook with in the oven. Uh, so it really does a great job searing. And once you get everything together in that pot and you put the lid on it, it's like magic. It really does a great job. So here we go. I think we're about ready. Yeah. We're going to spring that over. Careful so you don't get splattered with any of the grease in the pan. Okay, now that we've got that brown, and it's pretty brown on the first side, uh, we want to go ahead and take our organic uh, garlic, and we're going to put that over the top, and that's just saving us time so we don't have to chop it. So this is the organic garlic that I'm using. It's a minced garlic. And I'm going to put about a heaping teaspoon on the top of that pot roast and we're just going to kind of spread it out around the top so it kind of evenly so we get some even flavor going through that pot roast. There we go. Then I have chopped up some onion. And we're going to lay some thick sliced onion over the top of that roast. Now the onion is sliced to about, I'd say, a half an inch thick. It's going to be in the oven a long time then, and it's going to cook down into the meat, adding even more flavor. Then we're going to take the broth, and we're going to pour that broth all around. And once we get that in there, then we're going to be trying to put the lid on and get this baby into the oven. Now once this goes into the oven, we're going to let this cook for about an hour and a half on 350. After the hour and a half, then we're going to pull it back out again and we're going to add the carrots and the potatoes and we'll turn the temperature of the oven down to 325 degrees so that we get a nice slow cook on that pot roast and we'll leave it in for an additional two hours. So the cooking time on this pot roast that's a two and a half pounder with carrots and potatoes is going to be about four hours. Okay, we're back and it's time to put the vegetables in. As you can see that roast is coming along quite nicely. And we've got some carrots that I've cut kind of thick because we're going to have this in the oven for, you know, another two hours or so. Um, possibly two and a half hours. So we want to make sure that those vegetables don't cook up and turn to mush. So I put the nice big chunks in around the pot roast. And more onion. Now there again, it might sound like a lot, but it really isn't in the end, as you will soon see. Next, I'm going to put the potatoes around, and I just halved most of these potatoes so that they are nice and big chunks also. I'm also going to turn the oven down to 325 when we get ready to put this back in so that it can cook a little bit slower and that roast can continue to get more and more tender. And don't forget to use those oven mitts. Could be an alley if you pick that lid up by accident. Okay. Back in the oven it's going to go. And we'll come and take a look at this in about two hours. and see where we're at from there.
Okay, it's been two and a half hours, and so we're going to go ahead and pull our roast out. It should be just about ready. So be really careful when you lift the pot out, it is going to be heavy. There we go. And be careful when you're lifting the lid, a lot of steam coming out of there. There you go. Man, that smells so good. And it looks great. So we're going to... We're going to get a fork and we're going to check those vegetables and make sure that they are cooked all the way through. Yes, they are. It's perfect. So, next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a dish and we're going to put the vegetables in a bowl and keep those separate from the pot roast for the time being. Now, if you have a glass baking dish that you're using, uh, once you get the pot roast out, vegetables out, you're going to want to transfer the juice to a saucepan, about a medium size. Um, and that way you're not going to take a chance of breaking your baking dish on the stovetop. So just be really careful with that. If you're using a metal dish, you can complete the whole thing in that metal uh, pan, that cooking pan, if you'd like to, or you can also use a saucepan to finish your gravy with. But we're going to do ours in a Dutch oven here. So we're just about done with pulling out the vegetables. And just be really careful that you don't uh, mash everything as you're pulling it out. Vegetables are pretty well done. The potatoes are the ones that are the most tender when you're trying to get the stuff out of the pot roast. Uh, so just be really careful with that. As you're pulling out the carrots and the potatoes, uh, and if you see onions in there, go ahead and pull the onions out with them. Any leftover vegetables, pot roast, and gravy that we have from today, we're gonna make another video on how to make the roast beef hash and that's what you're gonna do with leftover pot roast or that's what we do with leftover pot roast so I just thought I'd share that recipe with you in the next video as well um, roast beef hash is similar to corned beef hash it just happens to have some carrots in it where the corned beef hash doesn't Let's see if we can find a spatula so that we can lift this pot roast out. Oh, I don't think we're going to find it in this drawer. Nope. Okay, there's one. Now we're going to carefully lift this pot roast out using the spatula and the scoop. Then you can do this. You can divide your pot roast in half if you need to. I'm just funny I like to try to get the whole thing out in one shot there we go now it looks like we've got a few onions in there we're going to try to get those out and our juices have cooked down quite a bit so I'm going to add two cups of water to this to make sure that we have plenty of gravy for our dinner and also for our roast beef hash that we're going to make in the next video. There we go. Okay. All right, I've added the two cups of water and I turned the burner up to high so that we can get this boiling. We want to bring it to a boil, but make sure that you're using a wire whisk if you can and get all those little bits off the bottom if you have any bits on the bottom. Those are full of flavor and you want to make sure that you're getting those incorporated. Okay. In the meantime, I have six tablespoons of cornstarch. I'm going to put water in this to cover the cornstarch and make a slurry with it. I make mine a little runny, which is good for me because then I don't have to be quite so careful about how I'm pouring it in here. Now the secret to a good gravy is to dissolve that cornstarch really well. So you want to stir it until it is absolutely dissolved in there. If you don't, you may get some lumps. But I prefer to use cornstarch over flour. I find that I don't get any lumps in my gravy when I use cornstarch. So the secret is just make sure it's good and dissolved. 
Then as we're going to stir it in, we want to make sure that we're stirring with that whisk really well at the same time that we're pouring in our slurry of cornstarch. And just pour a little at a time. A little goes a long way. So we never really quite know how much we're going to need, so just go a little bit at a time. You can always add more. And it's going to cook and thicken up as it goes. So I think we need a little more. There we go. That's probably going to be about enough. Let's see. Oh yeah. That's going to come out really good there, I think. And so once again, you're going to make the gravy to your desired thickness. And continue to let that cook for just a moment. We're going to taste it though and make sure we have enough seasoning in there after we added that water. Remember those juices were very concentrated so we'll see. It's super hot. Careful. Mmm. That's pretty good but I think we're going to need a little bit of pepper. So add a little bit more pepper in there. I think the salt is good. So we did real well with not having to add too much more to it. Perfect. So we're going to pull this off the burner and let it start to cool down a little bit. And stir a little bit more. We don't want it to stick to the bottom of the pan. That is really good gravy. And I always take a ladle and I scoop one nice scoop over the top of the pot roast because I think it makes it look pretty. There we go. So now we have the pot roast complete on the platter and we're going to put the vegetables all around it. You'll see in just a moment. All you need is some crusty bread and your dinner is ready. If you like our video today, please remember to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Let us know how we're doing. Thank you very much for giving us your time today, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day. Bye, guys.